It will be 30 years ago this Sunday that scientists put a name on a mysterious and lethal disease, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, or AIDS. Originally, it was thought to only afflict gay men until high-profile cases started coming out like Magic Johnson showing HIV knows no boundaries. These days, thanks to antiretroviral drugs, being diagnosed as HIV positive is no longer a death sentence, and transmission rates in the U.S. have been cut by 96 percent. People are living for decades uh, without illness at all. Fortunately, a very different story in developing nations where new infections and deaths are still rampant. More than 33 million people around the world have HIV. One of them is Justin Smith, a local activist who has practically made a career out of public awareness. This spring, he published a children's book about having HIV. And as Brittany Morehouse reports, he finds it a little strange to think he's just one year older than the emergence of AIDS itself. We're here at the inauguration of From major events and I'm here at the acupuncturist to doctor's appointments. Right now, I take about four medications to details of his life. Hey guys, Justin from Justin's HB Journal. Justin and B. Smith documents his life in a video journal focused on one fact. I've been HIV positive since 2005 and you know, I'm living with it. I'm feeling good. I'm healthy. I decided to put it in front of the camera because I had yet to see an African-American gay male or anybody like actually going to a doctor's visit, putting it on YouTube, letting thousands of people read it or, you know, even millions. He contracted the virus in 2005, just two years after he was honorably discharged from the Air Force. Smith says while he's only 31, he remembers the early days of AIDS when people like Ryan White were crucified for having the illness. Even though there's a lot more work that needs to be done, you know, we've come very far in education and we know now that, you know, me touching anybody is not going to give them HIV. Justin works right in the heart of Washington, D.C., but he lives in Laurel, Maryland with his husband, who he married two years ago in August. He says often he finds the fact that he's open about being HIV positive is more resisted than the fact that he's open about being gay. I get a lot of criticism. There are a lot of people out there called HIV denialists or HIV dissidents that don't believe that HIV causes AIDS. They still don't believe that HIV is a sexually transmitted disease. Where he finds the most support for his online blog and public profile, people two decades older. I get a lot of attention from that generation saying thank you. Because back then, he says, they could never have done this. Brittany Morehouse, 9 News Now. The Smithsonian's National Museum of American History is marking the 30th anniversary of the emergence of HIV and AIDS with a special display and website that started today. This exhibit examines the early days of the global AIDS pandemic between 1981 to 1987 when doctors didn't know what it was and many denied it existed.